Hello and another very enthusiastic welcome to this episode of Baju Sidek Roundup where we bring you what's new in the fields of science and technology and also the science behind the latest news of the world. Now today's episode is a special one. It is all about robots. So let's get started. Our first news of the day is about robots made of dead spiders. Scientists in Rice University, Texas have found that we can use dead spiders as robots. They are calling it necrobotics, which means robotics of the dead. When alive, spiders have a natural ability to grip and lift heavy objects, mostly insects that they feed on thanks to their eight limbs that can bend when gripping an object and can be straightened to release the object. By understanding the mechanism behind the movement of the spider's limbs, scientists have found a way to use the gripping ability of spiders even when they are dead. It all started when a scientist observed a dead spider in the corner and noticed that its legs were tightly bent to its chest. Question was, why? Why are they bent when the spider is dead? Well, to answer this, let's first take a deep dive and understand how we bend our arms. Now, there are two muscles in our arm that help with bending. We have the bicep and the tricep. Now, when I bend my arm, my bicep contracts and my tricep relaxes. And when I straighten my arm, the tricep contracts and the bicep relaxes. To move human limbs, such a pair of opposing muscles or antagonistic muscles work together by pulling a joint in opposite directions. Now, let's see how spiders bend their limbs and how it is different from us. Unlike our pair of muscles, spiders have just one muscle, a flexor muscle that allows them to only bend their limbs. To straighten them, spiders force blood into their legs from a chamber near the thorax called the prosoma. The pressure of the blood helps push the joint open. That means that they work on the principle of fluid pressure just like how this balloon man straightens when it gets filled with air. This is also similar to how hydraulic cranes work using the pressure of water. Now, when the spider is dead, there is no blood to force the limbs and hence the legs curl up near the chest. But could there be another way of providing pressure for the limbs to open when the spiders were dead? Well, the scientists used air. They put a needle in the prosoma of the spider's corpse, super glued it in place and, and blew air into it. And the spider's limbs opened straight. When air was sucked back in, they curled again. The success of this experiment meant that the spider corpses could be used as claw machines. Wolf spiders, which are very commonly found, have tiny hair on their legs, which give them extra grip. They have evolved to be able to grip objects much larger and heavier than themselves. And they can grab them delicately too. Their bodies are specialized for gripping and researchers plan to use this ability in many fields. They can move fragile electrical components in microelectronic circuits without damaging them. And they can collect live insects for ecological studies. Not only do these corpse robots or necrobots have many applications, they also benefit the environment. If we can replace robots made of plastic or metal with these natural biodegradable ro robots, we can minimize introducing pollution and waste into our ecosystem. What's more, they are easily accessible and more effective than man-made robots. Can you think of an animal or an animal part that could make for a great necrobot? Where would you use it? 
comment your ideas below. The next robot themed news is about elephants inspiring robots. In an exciting study, scientists at the Georgia Institute of Technology have found that elephant skin can improve soft robots. Well, we have been taking inspiration from nature to design new technology for a long time now. For example, the flight of the birds was an inspiration to design flying technology. Yes, airplanes. Similarly, the way in which muscles move in animals and humans has inspired movement in robots. But until now, our robots were designed either for strength or for flexibility. Hard robots are made of strong and inflexible material. They lack flexibility. On the other hand, soft robots are not made of strong but instead flexible material. Soft robots use segmented structures to allow flexible movements. But many small segments in the soft robot again compromise its strength. However, this new study on elephants has revealed that it is possible to combine strength and flexibility in robots. To understand this, let's first take a deep dive into the elephant's trunk, which is both strong and flexible. The famous elephant trunk is capable of ripping apart large tree trunks. But did you know that it is devoid of any bones? Just like our tongue, it is a muscle. You know, for a long time, scientists thought that this naturally endowed muscle alone was responsible for the elephant's trunk's strength and flexibility both. Materials like plastics, rubbers or metals could not replicate this strength and flexibility in a robot. But this study has shown that it is not only the muscles, but also the elephant's skin that has a large role to play in flexibility and movement. Unlike our tongue, the elephant's trunk doesn't stretch uniformly. When elephants reach for food, the top and bottom parts of their trunks move differently. On the top of the trunk, the skin has many folds. This makes the top 15% more flexible than the bottom part. You must have observed that when elephants grip objects, their most common style is reaching downwards. This is assisted by their skin. The skin not only adds to the trunk's flexibility, but also its strength. You see, being wrapped in a layer of thick skin gives support to the muscle too and increases the overall strength of the trunk. The role of the skin opens up new avenues for robotic movements. This new study reveals how wrapping soft robots with a layer of skin or skin-like structures can assist with flexible movements and provide strength and protection. So, elephants might soon usher in a new era of soft robotics. Way to go for science and technology! It is often in basic science that we find the foundation for immensely useful technology. And it is often in small inventions that we can see a big change. All right, we will be back next week for yet another exciting episode of Baju SciTech Analysis. Until then, keep sciencing and do not forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon.